Welcome to Linda's TV show. If it is your first time, you like the channel, you like the program, subscribe and put on your notification bell because it's going to help you to know when I upload a new video. Like you all may know, I present information across the globe, especially in Nigeria to be precise. And I want to appreciate my viewers, my subscribers. You guys are so amazing, especially those who always tune in to watch me each time I upload a new video. It's not easy for you to leave what you are doing to watch my videos especially those of my friends who hit me with harsh comments i am not against anybody i'm just a journalist i'm presenting to you what is happening in the whole world so if you think that the video or my title is not good tell me i am a human being i have conscience and reason and i read your comment i'm going to make a mend okay my wonderful people so i open up a new youtube channel where i talk about life in germany if you want to come to germany to study to live to relocate to work follow that link i'm going to put the link down below click on it it will take you there if you want to chat to me one-on-one -on -one, or maybe you want to get enough clarification please contact me on ig with the name chukwezi tochi and for those who are telling me that this is an old video it might be old to you but to others it's not old if you think that the video is old to you then you can walk away please let's watch this video we're joined by his excellency yaya Bello, governor of kogi state good morning and thank you for joining us today on the program well let's start off with uh you know good morning where... and uh, thank you mr chamberlain and good morning nigerians all right let's start off from where uh the comments came through from uh, the ptf they say i mean we just had dr ali saying they're meeting with state governors the president did of course encourage them to have that conversation with state governors and he says uh, a quite fruitful meeting he was encouraged by the responses from governors so could you give us uh, at least uh, some information concerning what is going on about that meeting and then the position of governors how they intend to conduct themselves moving forward in their states uh, are you talking about the issue of COVID-19? Yes, please. Uh, please, I think uh, I would rather be excused from discussing COVID-19 because uh, I have taken a position and I don't see myself shifting away from that position anytime soon or ever. I say this against the uh, uh, backdrop of the fact that we saw a lot of uh, the gimmicks and antics and merchandising of uh, foreign products that is not marketable in Nigeria at all. And uh, I said this long ago, and uh, some people who are, you know, are advising Mr. President continue to, you know, take a wrong trajectory. I will, I will, I will say that. Um, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't for crying out loud do cut and paste when it comes to an issue like this. Let me just simply summarize it by saying this, and uh, put me anywhere. If in the winter in Europe, America, and other places outside the world, we're turn turning on our heater, both at home, at work, and when we're driving along the road, what do you do in Nigeria? You turn on AC, air conditioner. Why didn't we turn on, or why are we not turning on ACs in our homes, cars, and offices? So that is the challenge that we are facing in, this, uh, in, this, in the management of this COVID-19. I don't think we should apply the same solution across. Here we are in Kogi State. We say we have no COVID-19. And actually, as a matter of fact, we have no COVID-19. After the early, you know, misunderstanding between uh, the state government and the NCDC, we later allow them to step into Kogi State. After one month of intensive testing by their workers and officials, not one single individual was tested positive. NCDC, Ministry of Health, and my state incident management team went round. They went to institutions marketplaces, motor parks, streets, villages, towns, and cities. And not one single individual was confirmed positive. We have, um, of course, you know that in Kogi State, we are running a very smooth academic sessions in our tertiary institutions. 
when students are resuming back to school, we carry out tests. The, the indigents or those that are resident in, within Kogi State and those that are coming from outside the state, we test them and there has never, never been one single positive test. Now, we have an uh, NYSE camp in Kogi State. We have received up to three or four streams of uh, batches of core members. NCDC, NYSC, the military, the Kogi State Incident Management Team jointly carry out this exercise of testing on those core members that resumes uh, camp. Not one single, and every stream comprises of not less than 700 to 750 core members. Not one single one tests positive. Our eyes are there. We ensure they don't manipulate the numbers. You see, all, all this brouhaha coming up about the issue of COVID-19 and vaccine. I don't think we deserve it now. We have an, an economy that Mr. President inherited. Struggling. Recession. Low income. Left, right, center. And Mr. President is doing his best to make sure... He pulls it out of the woods. I think, I think we, the followers, or we, the lieutenants, or those of us that are charged with the responsibility of advising Mr. President should do that with utmost fear of God Almighty. We're talking of insecurity today in the country. Boko Haram, Iswap, banditry, kidnapping, and robbery. Let me tell you that when you lock over 200 million citizens at home for one day you cannot quantify the number of lives that are lost livelihoods lost can never be regained most of them we don't need this this marketing strategies that is happening in the country today it is most unfortunate but unfortunately i mean uh, they are there they are doing they are doing their job you know, whatever it is. But honestly, I am not on the same page with them. Look at Kogi State. We did not lock down. Okay, fine. I, I was going to follow okay, up on... Despite all the... All the that, that, that analogy all you the gave. troubles we are facing... Pardon me to jump in. Please, let me just that, land. That, okay. After all, let me just land this. You see, after all the troubles of not locking down, we refused to lock down Kogi State bordering 10 states... We have seen it practically. Today, Kogi says it's safer in terms of healthcare delivery, in terms of security, and it has manifested in the number of investment flowing into Kogi say today. I didn't say it. Nigeria Investment Promotion Council said it. They are the ones that are keeping the data. Out of 3.6 billion inflow of investment, Kogi alone had over 1 billion. There's no record science. We didn't do anything. We simply make sure that things work in Kogi State. And that is where we are. Imagine what we are losing as a nation. We don't need to participate in this marketing of, 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 of vaccine or COVID-19. Let our people be free. That is just my simple uh, message to the, 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 the PTF. Mr. President entrusted you. He had a, an absolute trust in you. And I think you have the duty to advise Mr. President in line with the current reality we're facing in the country today. So I don't think we should, uh, we should overburden the, the matter. Okay, so in, in consideration of your uh, heater, uh, AC analogy, where you think we should be doing something different or approaching it differently here, what suggestions or recommendations did you offer that has not been heeded? And if you don't mind, which quarters did you offer this to? I have said this severally in our various meetings that we have as governors in National Economic Council meeting in our in various you know fora. I have I have I have I've made my position known, you know personally and openly and in public. Um, let me take you through once again, uh, Mr. Chamberlain. If we are going to expend five hundred and forty billion in the purchase of vaccine. I mean, let me just simply give you this analysis. In Kogise today, we are building a multi-billion Naira uh, hospital that is going to have every equipment you can ever think of in terms of medical and healthcare 
service delivery worth just 4.7 billion. Now, let's extrapolate. If we are going to spend 10 billion naira per health institution that would cater for a more deadly disease, not COVID-19 that has 99.9 .9 chances of recovery rate, a more deadly disease that are killing every day, if we ex expend just 10 billion only, and 10 billion put in Nigeria factor, let me put it that way, and taxes. I mean, we are going to have 54 of such. Every state power will have one each. FCT can have up to two. Lagos can have up to two. Kano can have up to two. And not some other major cities can have up to two. No disease we will not be able to care, cure in this country. From CBN, you know, analysis sometimes back. 3.5 trillion expended so far on COVID and COVID-related matters. We don't need to have gone through that route. In one of these, our sessions in the National Economic Council meeting, there was this uh, um, uh, issue that came up regarding infrastructure, road infrastructure in the country. I'm sure you know Mr. President care about Nigerians so much. And he continued to emphasize on infrastructure building, building of infrastructure. And he was doing much within the little resources available to him. But in order to take it further and faster, we suggested that a committee be set up under the leadership of Governor Nasser Ahmed Erufai. And this committee did a wonderful job. This committee comprises of some governors, including CBN themselves. And they, come up, they came up with just a report, a report that's in summary, that requires only $2 billion, $2 billion only to fix major commercially viable roads in the country. That report has been gathering dust over one year. Yet, we have expended $3.5 on COVID and COVID-related matters. That is unprecedented. How did we spend that money? I think we should be asking questions on national issues that concerns our lives and livelihood. So, if we're now gravitating towards locking down our people, creating a scenario and a situation where civil servants and Nigerians will be forced to take vaccine, vaccine that the producers have absorbed themselves. In other words, this is my product. I produced it. But I will not take responsibility if this product harm you. Yet, we are rushing to get this product to force on our people. I don't think PTF should go that route. That is my personal opinion. I think they should do better. Well, you, you've raised uh, one crucial issue the other time, which is the fact that uh, when you said the livelihoods lost may not be regained. Same for lives. And you've also over and over again talked about lives and livelihood. And lives now, let's talk about that one. It was the reason the North Central governors had a meeting uh, to discuss insecurity and those other things. A number of other things that you, you raised. And part of the recommendation was that the, the, the military camps should be built in the North Central so that you know we can you know, word off these band-aids and, uh, and all of that. The question that came to my mind straight away is asking for military barracks or military camps is in a way saying that the central governors of the North Central states have lost confidence in the police. Is that the case? Uh, not the case. That's not the case uh, at all. Um, in North Central... We face a lot of uh, security challenges, and sometimes it can be peculiar, and we're handling it the best way we can. Uh, remember, we met sometimes last year in Nasarawa State with the whole of the North Central, including Inspector General of Police, and we came up with far-reaching uh, decisions, some of which were implemented, some were yet to implement. And those that were implemented really worked, among which is deploying of special forces of both the military, the police, and the Air Force. 
Today, we have the Air Force uh, uh, base, I think, in Nasarawa State, Kum, uh, Benue State. So also, just of recent, uh, the Nigerian Armed Forces deployed special forces to assist us. Today, they are doing excellently well. The special forces cannot occupy a space or a land for too long. They just come in, do clearance operation, and leave for another uh, uh, destination. So we now look at it this way, that we have to see a situation where camps does not necessarily mean that all the soldiers or soldiers must always be there at all times. It could be a designated area for training or for military exercises, thereby warding off, you know, this uh, 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 bandits or criminals, you know, of uh, hibernating in these areas. So when we talk, when we talk of, uh, you know, deployment of uh, military, that is what we mean by that. And they are trained to do that. The police are not trained to go inside the bush, even though recently the policemen, uh, the police, Nigeria police have really come up with uh, another special forces too that could equally, you know, uh, assist in going into the bush to route out the criminals. So right now, the uh, relative peace and security we are enjoying in the cities and on highways are uh, being manned by the police. So they are trying, trying very well. So when we said military should be deployed, camps should be established, it's to simply say, let there be training grounds, periodically allow your military to come and be carrying out some, some trainings around in, uh, these areas. Because I haven't seen how effective the special forces under the, the command of uh, Major General M.G. Ali, I think they have done excellently well. Well, again, uh, if you don't mind me emphasizing the same thing, Your Excellency, um, you said that you had that meeting with the IG, the Inspector General of Police. Uh, if some of those things that you recommended, which you governors believe would work, have not been implemented, um, wouldn't you say we are overwriting or overruling the functions of the police by asking the military to come and perform the job of the police? Uh, let me take you uh, a little bit further than the just mere reducing, securing our country or our region or our states to the function or to the responsibilities of just the military and the police alone. I will just tell you briefly about what I did in Kogi State and which I believe has worked very well. Securing an enclave it's not just the responsibility of the military or the police. What we did in Kogi State was to ensure that the citizens own the security architecture and safety of their lives and livelihoods. So what the military and the police were doing was just, you know, complementing the efforts of the, of, the, of the citizens. So if each and every one of us are doing that I think insecurity will be cut significantly and the military and police, the pressure will be reduced on the military and the police. Why did I say this? When I said this against the backdrop of the fact that, uh, I'm sorry to say, political will is greatly required in fighting this insecurity in our land today. Let the truth be told. When we went to Nasarawa in that particular meeting, some bandits were said to have repent or repented and that we should grant them amnesty. My lone voice spoke and I did said that I will never negotiate with bandits, kidnappers, or any of these criminals. Not up to two weeks thereafter, the head of this bandit that I saw with my two eyes, naked eyes, and his uh, ragtag um, lieutenants went on rampage again, kept kidnapping and killing and maiming our people. Now, somebody were in touch with them. A high-ranking political stalwart in this country we're in touch with them. He came and guaranteed that amnesty that day. 
and he spoke to the media that he is guaranteeing that these criminals will not return back to that path. But where are we today? In Kogi, say, this is what I do. If we discover that you have connection with any form of criminal or any cell at all, we don't spare you. We will deal decisively with the soldiers of those criminals or the foot soldiers of these criminals and we come straight head on for those who stood for them and we neutralize them straight away. And then that gave the confidence to the Nigerian citizens, to Kogi citizens. And then they began to come out to volunteer informations. And we worked on those informations and intelligence. And we're getting it right in Kogi State. So irrespective of your political affiliation or your status in Kogi State, you dare not have hand in crimes and criminality. The law will deal decisively with you. We'll follow the law to deal with you. So these are the things that we need to do as a people, as a government, to reduce pressure on government, to reduce pressure on security forces. It is still under the leadership of the current service chiefs that were able to achieve this feat and successes in Kogi State. Remember, I inherited a state that was bedeviled with all forms of crimes and criminality. But today, reverse is the case. We are seeing it in the investment, uh, investment uh, profile of the state. We are seeing it in the security and, uh, and safety of our people. Our people are living very nicely, healthy, and they are happy with us. So this we have really conversed in our various meetings, including the last one. And I trust that we are going to implement it across board. Well, let's shed some more light on some of these other measures, what will play out, how should we approach some of these things when we return in just a moment. Please join us again. Welcome back to Sunrise City. Well, Your Excellency, we'd like you to listen to this comment uh, from one of your colleagues and then We'll also reference one material which I ascribe to you in just a moment, but have a listen to this. I have already instituted uh, uh, court actions that uh, uh, I will tell the third person to the court to justify his uh, claim that because of that intervention, I decided to step up. Because of the intervention of my colleagues, I now decided to hold on till when the APC has taken action against that person because it's something that touched my reputation. So, as I said, based on the potential that the state has, this, uh, this vulnerability was just created in order to scare away the investors so that they should not come into this country and invest, which it is very, very unfortunate. We have so many things to tell the world, but uh, the time will come that we we'll open up and inform the whole world what is happening and what happened and why they created that boundary so that uh, 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 the whole world will understand what we have been going through. But with the help of Almighty Allah, we are on top of the matter and the forested gradually is, uh, you know, becoming a normal state and most of the activities are going on in the state now. In fact, now in the president, you can go to any corner, any local government, any time without any harassment. Well, that was um, Zamfara State Governor saying that um, he, he was stopped by the Nigeria Governor's Forum from taking legal action over allegations by the acting National Publicity Secretary of the APC who allegedly labeled him as a major sponsor of bandits in the Northwest. So uh, those are some of the issues that he raised. But uh, uh, if you can hear me, Excellency, you also did have um, an interview on the 19th of December. That's when it was published, actually. Uh, you were accredited to have said that um, selfish politicians were frustrating security 
in Koki. As a matter of fact, you said that um, politicians are politicizing insecurity for selfish political and economic gains. And then you say that they are enemies of the country. And in that particular report as well, the governor did say that banditry, his words were, banditry was created. What is going on? Uh, Mr. Chamberlain, thank you very much. I think I agree with uh, my colleague governor from Zamfara State. When I came on board, like I said earlier, I inherited a state that was largely divided along several lines. And for you to aspire to be anything politically in Kogi State then, you must have what we call boys or thugs or touts. And then use it to intimidate, intimidate yourselves during political dispensations. Once the political you know, exercise is over, the so-called talks or boys or foot soldiers will be abandoned and be left to themselves. And by that, they breed into something else or a hydra-headed monster that you will not be able to curb at the end of the day. There are several history records and intelligence to that effect, not only in Kogi State, not only in Zamfara State, not only in the North, but across the country. And they are still existing today. But what did I do when I came on board? I refused to play that kind of dangerous and unnecessary politics. My ascension to office is known to everybody across the world. So I chose my path immediately and decided to deal with criminals, irrespective of political affiliation. And what did I do? I simply utilized the laws as I met on ground. Some passed by the Kogi State House of Assembly, ascended to, assented to by my predecessor, but never used. And again, use the existing security architecture, both the military, the police, the DSS, and all others. And then I went to the people with sincerity of purpose. I was open, transparent, and I was accountable in the utilization of the resources of the state for the entirety of the people. And then I now put it across to them side by side. Here are situations we have met on ground. Should we dispense or utilize this fund in fighting insecurity and leave our infrastructure? Or we should fight insecurity within ourselves, using the available means, and use the resources for the people. The people chose that we should use the resources for them. So I got them involved in the fight against crimes and criminality. So irrespective of your political affiliation, those that are criminals among themselves, they exposed them. And what did I do? We took action. We never harbored anybody. We did not encourage anyone to attack the other. We opened the door. We run an open door policy in the state. And the people bought into it. And then, irrespective of who you are, highly placed or the political party you belong to, everybody now began to follow the rules of the game. Now, I don't think uh, I am privy to when the NGF took a decision that the, the Zamfara state governor should not take whoever cast aspersion on his person or his government to court. I will not support that as a person. If anybody accused you wrongly, wrongly of any, uh, of any mis misdeed and you feel strongly about it, as a free citizen or as a government, you are free to take you know, the matter to court. And I think I will encourage uh, my brother uh, Mutawale to take the court, I mean the matter to court. Okay, but so, now, and I did equally allude to yeah. the fact that. Pardon me, let me just follow up on something you mentioned. United States having meeting. Yeah, but yeah. before you go to that next point, and I hope you don't lose your train of thought, your first term, how you came into office, yes, I mean, lots of people saw that. But for the second term, are you saying you won election without voice? 
You have some people who help who worked with you. I work for you. I won my election free and square. Police, the DSS, the military, and all law enforcement agencies and intelligence world have their facts. You see, don't listen too much to you know what they peddle, the lies and falsehood they peddle in the media. That's why sometimes when those things are going on, I simply laugh. I say how I wish they come to Kogi State to come and study just for another one week. Just one your week. Excellency, it's we're well listening to about. you. You see, let me tell you, let me tell you a scenario. Let me tell you a scenario. But, let me but, just my give apologies. You a scenario. Your Excellency, just before you go there, a particular you go there, contestant. Just, just a one moment. Contestant. Just one moment. Just one moment, Your Excellency. You said, you know, earlier, before you know, Chamberlain asked this question, you said you can't win an election without some boys working for you. That's what you said. And th I think that's the, the background upon which, you know, Chamberlain is asking if those boys also worked for you to win the election. No, I said those in, before, prior to now. I said Kogi State is a state that you can't become anything, you can't win any election without affiliating yourself with boys. Some people call it talks, some call them touts. I said reverse is the case in my own election and re-election. And I, I'll give you this uh, a scenario. We try to beautify the town and cities across Kogi State. On a particular campaign trail of a, a, a contestant, when they got to one roundabout, we call it Paparanda Roundabout, very beautiful, well littered. All the floodlights, the streetlights, and the beautification were destroyed. Had it been I took action then, it would be mis, you know, misinterpreted that I am trying to suppress or oppress you know, a contestant. But there's nowhere in my campaign you have ever heard that or you heard that any of my supporters or followers go into destruction of billboards, signposts, or installation of the state's government. There's nowhere. During, before, during, and after the election. I made people bold to say this. Somebody, some, some people might even allude to the incident, unfortunate incident that led to the death of a uh, PDP women leader in one of the local governments. Investigations are still on, and I promise you I am going to prosecute that case to the letter to prove who I am. And... The, the, the informations out there are completely false. But when the reality or the truth comes out, we equally make it public. Okay, th so th that's good to know. When politicians but began to stop the use of talks, touts, or some, some group of criminals, then that is when we will begin to have safety and security. Let me now, take you to the point you are about to make. A top stalwart. Yeah, I was going to ask that question, and you were going to make the point. You were also quoted in that interview saying, politicians are frustrating security in this country. In fact, they are the ones responsible, if I could uh, you know, interpret it that way, responsible for the insecurity we have in the country. So do you want to shed some light about that? What category are these politicians? Are they in the realm of, what, ministers, governors, or what? Politicians at all levels, save Mr. President. Politicians at all levels, save Mr. President. Records are there. Where criminals are, criminals are of different kind, but I refer to them as criminals. I will not classify. Will be arrested and calls will be put across to top security chiefs to either release them or make case for them. And at the end of the day, you see them roaming the streets. I did say just now that somebody came to take or stand or guaranteed the amnesty of some criminals and criminal leaders. Today, those people are still walking free. When you guarantee somebody and the person does not keep to the terms of their agreement or understanding, they should pay the, they should pay the price. They should face the music. But I don't think we are ready to go that hog. 
Your Excellency, but honestly, so many... under, under my leadership in Kogi yeah. State, whoever you are, we are right. dealing with you decisively. Okay. Well, one other thing, one of the issues that was raised at that meeting, you know, involved, you know, food security, so to speak. Um, the good question to ask would be, how is that going to happen? Part of the resolution in that communique indicated that the North Central governors are embracing the federal government's uh, transformation, uh, livestock trans transformation plan. How is that going to be operationalized, given, you know, all of these insecurity issues around? That is why each time we come or our lone voice like this speak, we should, people should listen to us. That, let's prioritize. Issue of uh, headers and uh, farmers uh, clash, you know, has been lingering on in this country. And the earlier we pay attention to investing in that sector, agriculture is not just crops. Agriculture involves livestock. And Anybody can participate in that sector. Federal government should de-emphasize in centralizing the control of that particular program. Agriculture takes place in states and in local governments. The earlier governors are given free hand to run and drive the process, the better. Ministry of, Finance of, of, uh, of Agriculture can just coordinate and listen to every state of their demands and meet up with those demands. Then we know how to handle it at our local level. If that one is ensured, there will be no clash again between heathers or livestock keepers and crop farmers. And then there will be a lot of food production in the country. The little we are able to do within our, 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 our region the Bainway, I'm sure you know that in Bainway State, um, the, 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 the incident of farmers' headers clash has reduced drastically. So also in, uh, in, in Niger State, the man has done excellently well. Governor uh, 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 Abubakar Sanibello has done excellently well. Equally in Plateau State, he is equally managing those crises. All it requires is just resources. It is more, let it be, even if it has to be a form of bailout, let it be. Because other private businesses were once bailed out. Airlines, banks, and so on were once bailed out. These are private businesses. So if such funds can be disbursed to various states and materials, I think we're going to have everlasting peace and security in that angle or in that right. aspect. Yeah, so just before you go, uh, one more thing. I know that the last time out you spoke about NSAS protests. If you warned, even uh, not long ago, that some persons were doing certain things to see uh, maybe for their own gain. But there were those who thought that that warning or the NSAS that was going to happen much later was going to be worse than what we saw previously. So was it a misconception? Are we off the hook now? Is everything calm concerning any of such related protests? Well, I, like I said, I supported the genuine cause and uh, reason why the, the, the answer protest, you know, emanated in the first place. I supported it 100%. I only cautioned against allowing um, uh, unguided elements, hijacking it and turning it uh, against us. Because at the end of the day, we, the younger ones or the youth, are the ones that are going to be turned against one another. And the protest was about taking a political coloration. And it was assuming a dangerous dimension. And if that should continue, we're not going to have a country before we could, we could talk of reformation. I envisioned that, and I cautioned, and I think the protesters saw reasons why they should shoot their sword. And at the end of the day, they shoot their sword, and today, we're living in peace. Right. I want to tell them and advise that the youths, the younger generation, should continue to be vigilant and put us that are in positions today on our toes to continue to deliver good governance for our people. We right. should not allow those of us that are in positions today at whatever level to bring us down because of few individual interests.
When I say these, those that are involved, they know. Don't listen to politicians. Rather, join politics. Be part of the system so that we can control and cleanse the system. These were my right, admonitions. And I thank God and I appreciate the organizers, the participants of the protest, that they heed to my word and advice. And as we proceed, whatever I see that is not going to be in the interest of we, the younger generations, or the youths, I will speak out. I will make it right. public. And I believe Nigerians will always listen to me. All right, then, Your Excellency, Yaya Bello, Governor of Kogi State, thank you for talking to us this morning. Thank you, and uh, happy Christmas. There is nothing like Corona that will affect me, because I know myself. In my family, we don't die premature death, so coronavirus is learning work. I why why I can't I see a half test mark here? Why I, I have it? No, sir, some place you want to enter, like bank or whatever, say, bring first mask. You get me? So I will not put it on. If not, I don't, this thing is, can suffocate somebody, sir, as far as I'm concerned. So I don't have time for that. It's real. I'm not denying the fact that it's not real, but it's not as... It doesn't affect us the way it affects the Western world. If not, we all, we'll all be dead by now. It's real, yes. I have my face mask in my pocket. I, I use it when I'm going to bank. Because, you know, on streets, it, it always affects you, your breath. So I always put it... It's, I have my face mask in my pocket. So I can easily put it on when I'm going to public places. And from what is happening globally, you can see that this doesn't affect the black man the way it affects the white people. Maybe because of the nature of our immunity or because of the sunshine or whatever. I mean, this is another way of, for them to siphon money. That's the way I see it as far as I'm concerned. Are you getting me? You call something uh, a pandemic and in a country of 220 million people, only about 1,200 people died in about eight months. You cannot call that in a pandemic. That, that, that is not a pandemic here. It may be in Europe or in America. I don't think they should go ahead with the second phase of lockdown because the, there was never a lockdown in the first place. So you cannot say that you want to lock down again because it's just going to put the country in high tension and everybody will just start panicking and it will lead to more uh, protests and riots. There, there, might be, there might be government imposed lockdown in major uh, part of Abuja or in major part of Nigeria, but when you go to the locality like the, um, the creeks, the, the villages and all that, there was, they didn't observe and they don't observe any lockdown. Like Guagualada for example or Cuba for example, they still go about their normal life, go to the markets and all that. So, it was never really a lockdown. Mm, it's not going to be good for us. Having seen that the first one was disastrous. Uh, looking at the issue of palliatives and uh, looking at the whole thing, you will see that the second lockdown, I believe that Nigerians will not accept it. And many will prefer that they better die with the disease than to die at home. Condition where we are now, there's no money. As that first lockdown, there's no help, helping hand. We don't know how this second one will be. That's what people are afraid of. If not, if you have enough food at home, you can relax at your home. But now, talk of now that everybody is out to hungry, um, hustle, and you don't have anything at home at hand. How do you make it? How do you meet up? You know, a lot of people collapse. The first one that goes, they die due to the poverty. It's what we are talking of. If not, this is, when they say sickness, they don't have to run for it. I'm not saying that government is not taking the direct uh, way, but they are, doing a, they are taking a direct step. But what is that? How are they going to control masses in terms of feeding and other things? I'm a teacher, a private school teacher. And you all know during the previous lockdown, most schools didn't pay their teachers. We all suffered that period. Many people died of hunger. So if the government go on another lockdown, it will not be funny at all. Why? Because most uh, directors and proprietors are not ready to pay teachers' salary. So imagine not staying for another month again without being paid. So it's going to be very painful. Please, the government shouldn't go on another lockdown. They should allow us to work because they are not paying us anything. From what I saw during the lockdown, the first phase of the lockdown, 
I think the government ought to drastically have faced for their responsibility. And I think by going for the second wave of lockdown, like I mentioned before, it's going to be like society in fertility. People are angry. There's going to be an uprising. As a whole, because I, I think we are in recession and um, I'm a student, I also work in the school. I know how it affected me in the first time. It affected me in all angles and I will see because I don't know what will happen. If For now it's a rumor, cause, but if it happens, it will affect everyone. Now, this second phase of lockdown, I think government should just find a way to do great things about it because we can't face what we faced before. We know that coronavirus is real. Yes, many people have died and uh, we have to take normal precaution about it so that in order to avoid something like this. But looking down, I think this period, I don't think it's, uh, it's okay because people have suffered a lot. The government should have this IQ, to have the sense. Go to the street just like you are doing. To get to find out the reactions of people. Because as I'm talking to you, a lot of people prefer an uprising if there's any going to be any up, any lockdown. Because one, there's not there's there's nothing like government presence. Like I mentioned the issue of the palliative for the vulnerables, rather people will have. They have still have more. They need it, still need more, but they don't have. Not that the government is not trying. They are trying, but when they give them, they went and lock it inside room to their own house, be taking it every night to their self. And masses are there suffering. Not the government is not released. Once they give them money, they went and share it to their own pocket. Some of them travel out and go and use them as suffering the poor masses. So, so that, that means something is wrong somewhere. I get me that you're just using this thing now to look at the scandal after the first lockdown. NDDC, six point something a billion uh, for palliative. They cannot account for it. And not, nobody's saying anything. Just like that, every other ministry, agencies, I get me, they use that thing as a gold mine. And that's what they are planning again to do. That's why they're saying second lockdown, second lockdown. Lockdown for what? What are they locking down? N you know Nigeria, we like party. We like social gatherings. And we like Owambe. Oh, so it won't, it won't work. Because even if you do it, people will disobey it. The, the worst that will happen is that you start a fight and the government, the government wants to start imposing lockdown and making it by force. It's just going to put the country in a high tension. So that's just it. So you just leave things the way they are. About 60 to 70 percent of Nigerians will not accept it. So I believe that if that happens, they may like to take law into their hands. I am not a lawbreaker, but I'm speaking on behalf of uh, what I can see in this country. Currency is it the Nigerian people's money? Is those people that you are doing Yahoo? For Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time or first day of coming across my YouTube channel or seeing my face, you are highly welcome. Please be comment to my next channel. My name is Linda Chukwezi. It comes as Miguel. That red button that says subscribe and you turn on the notification bell so that you'll be able to get information okay. on the bis zum nächsten video und einen schönen tag tschüss tschüss bis mein subscribe to linda's tv show what are you waiting for click on that red button that says subscribe you turn on the notification bell so that you'll be getting more updates from me leave your, your comment down below and share this video with your friends families and colleagues until we meet again in my next video bye bye